Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Howie Hawkins again with Sergi Movchan, who's with the Solidarity Collectives in Ukraine that are doing a lot of work for people, humanitarian aid to both uh, displaced people and people fighting on the front lines. And so I'm just going to ask Sergi to tell us how the Solidarity Collectives came together, who they are, what they're doing, and we'll take it from there. So, Sergi. Go ahead. Oh, okay, so Solidarity Collectives, it's an um, anti-authoritarian volunteer network. Our organization didn't exist before full-scale invasion. And the idea to create it came to the group of, first of all, anarchists, but not only uh, in uh, like two, three weeks before full-scale invasion. It was the meeting when people decided, what should we do if Putin will start the full-scale war? And the idea was to create two groups, two organizations. One, it's a group of fighters who will uh, join the military resistance. And another group, it should be the volunteers, uh, people who will support fighters. Because, of course, all these people, they didn't have a military experience. They didn't have uh, special equipment. They had nothing. And when it's happened, when the war started, full-scale war started, uh, both entities appeared. So uh, one group, it's anti-authoritarian unit, anti-authoritarian battalion, and another, it's a uh, volunteer organization. Uh, after a few months, we changed our name. So from the summer of 2022, we work as a solidarity collectives. And from the beginning, our main task was to support our comrades uh, in the army who joined it, uh, Ukrainian armed forces, territorial defense units, and so on. Uh, and yeah, at, at the beginning, it was absolutely impossible to get anything here. And our mix was very great success to get uh, even that bulletproof vests, helmets, um, tactical medicine, it's, that's what we're, what was our first task to provide it to our comrades, to increase their chances to survive. Uh, then we started uh, second direction of our work, uh, humanitarian, and still this day, we, every like month and a half approximately, we organized humanitarian trips to the prefront territories. Uh, first of all, uh, east of Ukraine, where is the war going on and where is like massive destructions, a lot of refugees, internal displaced people. And also it's the south of Ukraine, uh, where we brought uh, construction tools uh, to help people restore their buildings. Um, some electronic devices, generators, power stations, because there is uh, blackouts all the time because of Russian strikes on infrastructure. Uh, but also we are trying to improve our visibility to create a network here with the local volunteers, with another groups like our. Uh, also, we are strongly connected with the European uh, anti-authoritarian movement, different organizations uh, in many countries. We know that People are splitted, left movement are splitted uh, on the Ukrainian question, but still there is a lot of organizations and groups who are helping us all this uh, almost three years. And we are very grateful to them for, for, for doing this. Uh, and it's also part of our work to talk with people, to talk with uh, comrades, leftist, anarchist, and explain our position why today we we think that only one re only one way for anti-fascists, anti-authoritarians, leftists is to support Ukraine uh, in its struggle against Russian imperialism. Oh, sorry, and um, probably the last uh, part of our work, the new one, uh, we started to as assemble FPV drones and uh, we sent them to our pilots. So 
people in the United States, uh, I follow you on, I think it's Twitter and um, maybe your Facebook page. Um, how, how can people find out what you're doing and, and support you if uh, they want to help? Uh, of course, we have all social media, so you can follow us, you can see what we are doing. We publish all our reports, uh, what we deliver to soldiers. We have separate accounts and the groups who deliver help to soldiers, to civilians, to helping animals. Um, all this is like a separate work that in you know, one team. Uh, and from time to time, of course, we're posting our fundraising campaigns when we have to buy something quite expensive, like a car or some uh, like, uh, like radio electronic warfare to protect our people. So you can always find our requests, our needs, military needs, humanitarian needs and our reports of what we are doing and how we spent uh, this money but in general uh, the requests are super very, very they're like it's very different depends on uh, people depends on uh, if we speak about military uh, if we speak about our soldiers so depends on what they are doing what their type of work uh, are they medics are they pilots are they infantry so they have different requests uh, again started from basic things like uh, boots uh, jackets bulletproof vests tactical medicine and ended in uh, cars and drones and quite complicated technical devices uh, and of course uh, humanitarian uh, requests like right now we got a new big request from people uh, from Dobropilda town. It's a miners town uh, with very strong, uh, quite strong uh, trade union movement. And now it's became the place where new wave of internal displaced people arrived from uh, the newly occupied or totally destroyed towns on the uh, east of Ukraine and this new wave of refugees again they have nothing they just left everything they had behind uh, now they just totally destroyed and they asked us for again super basic things they asked us for uh, warm clothes they asked us for shoes for electric heaters or some very basic electronic devices just to start a new life on a new place and now we are going to raise uh, money and stuff itself and provide it to the to these people so tell me about the role of the anarchists and anti-authoritarian movement in left politics in ukraine and ukrainian politics generally mm -hmm. we are told that you know Zelensky and the government banned, they say all opposition political parties, that wasn't true, but opposition parties, and make it sound like you have no political freedom in Ukraine. So how free are you to organize and, and do your work? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, first of all, this party is banned by Zelensky, they're not left. Just believe me, it's uh, conservative parties, right even right parties which just have a name socialism like the word socialism in their names that's all uh they have common with the left movement that's all mostly it was really pro-russian parties uh conservative like orthodox many of them really support uh Orthodox, uh, really, they were very pro-religion. Um, they share some conspiracy theories. So, I re I really don't like any restrictions, but I really don't care about these parties. They're not 
like, even not our comrades, they are really our enemies. They are enemies of all people who stands for a free society. Um, in general, politics in Ukraine mo more or less on pause now. Um, there is not so many discussions like because of war. It slowly returns. No, we have opposition, we have Poroshenko party, of course. And um, if you are in opposition, but support Ukrainian resistance, so of course there is no problem for you. You can do whatever you want and it doesn't matter what kind of ideology you share. Of course, we have a left movement, we have far right movement, we have liberal organization like LGBT organization, feminist organization, nothing, nothing from this list is banned. Uh, and you can compare it to Russia or Belarus where everything which is not controlled by the Kremlin is uh, banned or like prohibited and prosecuted. Here, of course, it's not like that, but of course, I can say, I, I like partially agree that in the war time, you feel the shortage of democracy and mm, many rights now are limited. Yeah, it's it's true. Like I'm not going again. We are supporting Ukrainian resistance, but we are not going to support all decisions made by Zelensky. Everything what he said or what the ruling party said. No, we see many problems in, in our country. We see um, economical problems, we see problems with uh, uh, human rights, and uh, we are not going to whitewash Ukraine. But again, it doesn't mean like any every country has its own problems. In the time of war, these problems increasing, they became bigger. Uh, I really hope that when war will finish, we are going to fight against this um, injustice in, uh, against this new uh, limitations of human rights. Uh, but um, yeah, it's true, and I think it's uh, we should be honest with our comrades. But I'm not going to say that we are living in uh, under dictator <laughs> or uh, that Ukraine is a far right state. No, it's not true. Everything is mixed. Everything is super complicated, like in any other country. So one thing I've, I've got a sense that, uh, you know, the Solidarity Collective is more of the, out of the anarchist tradition and Salzioni Ruk or social movement more out of the socialist tradition. Uh, trade unions, people seem to be working well together, despite, you know, ideological differences. Um, is that an accurate perception on my part? More or less, more or less, yes. Um, of course, like, in, again, in every left movement, we had problems before, we had splits, we had, uh, like, hot discussions with each other, but after full-scale invasion, like it's um, not a point. Uh, now we're all ready to work together, to help each other, to improve each other movements. And uh, sometimes the, the members could be, could, the people could be members of few initiatives. Uh, yes, we are mostly connected with uh, anarchist movement. Um, mostly our members have they have anarchist background but not only and also we are supporting mostly anarchists but again not only we are we are supporting people I mean in the army the fighters from social movement too uh, we're supporting leftists we work together with the trade unions we're supporting uh, they are fighters. We are supporting from time to time families. Uh, we are okay. We we are working together to improve to improve uh, 
uh, trade unions, to make them the independent trade, trade unions, to make them more powerful and to, to help them help their members. Uh, I don't see any you know, contradictions today uh, here. It's um, maybe of when the war will finish, maybe we will like split again, maybe we will, we will start our different political careers, we will follow different political trajectories. It's normal thing. But today, almost all leftist, anarchist trade unions are united and almost all of us uh, share the same uh, idea that task number one is to, uh, to defend uh, Ukraine today, to, to resist Russian aggression. Yeah, one thing I noticed that uh, I think indicates the cooperation is uh, Taras Billis mm -hmm. got the Daniel Singer Prize, which is mm -hmm. uh, for the essay in the socialist tradition that made the biggest contribution in a year. Mm -hmm. And he got a $10,000 award. And he's in the social movement. And he gave it to the Solidarity Collectives. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should stop there. And, and that's a good lesson for us in the United States, because we had... Trump get elected and the left is not ready for that. So uh, we need our own solidarity and collective action. So thank you, Sergey, and uh, we'll make sure people in the United States hear about this. Thank you.